In this video, you'll learn all the top secret information on how to make this animation in After Effects. I'm gonna show you how I put this animation together all in After Effects. I'll be breaking down each step of the process and going through some really useful techniques. And of course, you can download this project file for free down in the description. The elements I'll be using to build this are from this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, Images 360, and a creative store full of amazing graphical assets like brushes, presets, lettering, illustrations, texture, UX, and UI kits and even more. You can also purchase a Yellow Ticket membership, which can make your project almost 10 times cheaper than before. And with that, you get three free items every month, a 30% discount for custom mock-up services, half price off the Creative Store, and instant synchronization of your Dropbox and Yellow Images account. For this project, I'm gonna be using two heads from this collection of expressive statues, which gives PNGs for every rotation you could want, and the soft serve ice cream cone from this ice cream collection too. More 3D ice cream than you could ever need. Without the yellow ticket, these would cost $44.97. But with a yellow ticket, it's only $4.50. And if this was your first purchase of the month, these three items would be free and it would cost nothing. Follow the link in my description to get 20% off a purchase on yellow images with my code BENMARRIOTT20. Don't miss out, these coupons are limited, so first come, first serve. Now I built this animation in five stages, each stage adding more complexity. And I've got those five stages in different comps over here. And I wanna go through how I built them and what's in each of them. So in main 01, I did the main blocking and the music. This is the simplest bare bones version of our animation. So we've got two seconds of a very happy head and then two seconds of a sad head. So our concept here is that we're gonna show the duality of man. Man indulges in ice cream, is ecstatic, and then in that state, forgets himself, indulges too much, leaving him empty, other than the overwhelming feeling of regret and shame. It's a tale as old as time, at least as old as ice cream. And to get our heads rotating like this is very simple. You might have seen it in my previous videos using the Yellow Images 360 PNGs, but if you haven't, we go up to File, Import, File again, locate where our PNGs are saved. And because they're all named sequentially, ending with 01, 02, 03, when we select one, it gives us the option to import as a sequence. Then if we hit Import, that is in our project panel and we can play it like a movie. There's a few things we want to change. Let's right click and go to interpret footage, main. Let's change the frame rate to 24. So it's a little bit slower and let's loop it a bunch of times. Let's say 20, that should last for us here. And then if you drag that into any of your projects, it's much too big here, so I'll scale it down. It functions like any piece of footage. So I made three comps of rotating elements. We have head one, our happy head. Head two is our regretful head. And we have our ice cream as well. So the first comp is just our two heads. Each one has a different colored background. And then I've got the music as well. So I have a clip of a happy sounding song and a clip of a sad one. And this extra piece is just a bit of the happy song I have fading in at the end here. Now, the sooner you can start animating to the final music, the better. And I'm working in a massive 60 second workspace, mainly so I can find pieces of music that I want and trim it to the right areas. But in the next comp, I'm just gonna trim it down to the four seconds that we're actually using. So in the next stage, I'm adding the background elements, mainly these ice creams in the first part. And I've also pre comp that audio track, so it's taking up fewer layers now that I'm starting to introduce some more elements. The ice creams are on these four layers. I'll solo the top three, and you can see that they are just moving down in position. Nothing fancy here, but they are in front of our head. So they are much larger than the ice creams at the back, and they're moving faster. This gives us a nice parallax effect and really just sells the illusion that we're in 3D space and that the bigger ice creams are closer to us. Now for the tiled ice creams at the back, I have added the motion tile effect. And it again is just one ice cream comp moving from top to bottom. Let's get rid of motion tile effect and I'll show you the process of how to repeat this layer. So let's add motion tile again, and it does exactly what it does. It repeats your layer, it tiles it, and all we have to do is increase the output width and increase the output height. Now to offset the ice creams in a sort of brick pattern, we just increase the phase. And if we increase it to 180, that will be exactly in the middle. And that's how we get our ice cream rain. Now I've done a similar thing with this grid of squares in the second part of our animation. And those are moving up to give this head a sort of sinking feeling in contrast to the head sort of rising up through the ice creams here. And this comp is currently called Sad Face. And that is because I originally had a sad face in there, but I thought that was just a bit too much. And I definitely wanted to be a bit subtle with this animation. So this comp is heinously mislabeled now. So let's rename it to Not Sad Face because we always label our layers. 
and I also added an adjustment layer with posterized time set to 12 frames per second. And this is so that the motion of the ice creams falling was at the same frame rate as all the other elements spinning at 12 frames per second. And now in the next comp, we are adding colors. See, subtle. And I'll show you how to make this cycling rainbow effect on this background layer. I'm gonna solo that layer and delete its effects so we can add them ourselves. So the first one is gradient ramp. And all that does is add a gradient to our layer and it gives us the options to change the start and end position of that gradient and colors if we wish to. But we're gonna change the colors with another effect, color armor. And what this does is take the luminosity values of this layer and outputs them as other colors. Now you can choose from a bunch of presets, but I really like the hue cycle for this effect. And to get it to animate, we go into the input phase and we animate the phase shift. So let's keyframe it at zero at the very start of our animation. And then in the last frame of this first section, increase it to 360, so it completes a full rotation. And now it's gonna cycle through that hue cycle rainbow. Now we can go back into our gradient ramp and we can adjust the start and end points here. So if we stretch this out, that stretches out our rainbow gradient. So now the colors aren't so tightly packed together and we get a more gradual wave of color. Now to get that cycling gradient outline effect on the head and ice creams, I applied those same effects, but on a duplicate comp. So what do I mean by that? Let's solo these two head comps here. So I have head one and then head one border. And head one border is just head one, but with those effects applied. We've got a gradient ramp and a color armor but I've also applied the effect Simple Choker. And what Simple Choker does is expand and contracts the edges of the layer. So if we increase it, our head shrinks, and if we decrease it, it grows bigger. And this is usually used for compositing, but it can be really useful here and in other places to create a stroke. So now it's slightly bigger than our regular head and gives us this nice outline that we can put our gradient rainbow over the top of. And I did the same with all the ice cream layers too. And for our sad scene, I just added two sort of gray gradients to make this void look just a little bit more interesting. And those are just on some gray solids with a feathered mask applied. Now onto the fourth stage, adding the eye beams. So these eye beams all happened in their own comp. So this is what the eye beams look like in their own comp. And I'm gonna turn these layers off and start from the beginning. So I started by copying in our main head animation just so I could use it as a reference and make sure everything lines up. And then I added this layer called eye covers. And this is kind of what I thought the eyes were gonna be when I started. But I was a little underwhelmed by this and thought, nah, let's give it some rainbow eye lasers. Again, subtly is important here. So this eye cover layer is just a shape layer and I've got two shapes in it, each one just tracing over the outline of the eye. And then what I did is rolled up my sleeve and every new frame shifted those shapes to cover up the eyes again. Now it's only really about 10 frames per eye because they eventually get covered up by the back of the head as it rotates and it loops as well. So we can copy and paste them. So it's just not quite as time consuming as you think. And then I decided it needed the laser beams. So what I then did was create a new shape layer, just a circle over each eye. And you could use a null for this also. And this was to make a guide for our beams. So then I tracked these manually onto each eye just by moving its position, every frame just nudging its position to make sure it's over the center of the eye and then sort of filled in the keyframes where I thought it should be when the head is facing away. And I did that for both eyes. So now I know the location of both eyes all the time because we need to see the lasers even though they're facing away. So then for the beams, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how I did that on a new shape layer, just grabbing a pen tool and drawing the shape of the beam that we want. Let's close up our shape. And that's on our right eye. So let's pair that to our eye right, which is our guide layer. And now you can see it follows that shape around. And then to get it in the right direction, I just move the anchor point of that layer to the center of the eye, rotated it a bit to the left when the face is facing left, keyframed it. And then when it's facing right, flipped it the other way. And now this is how this front section looks, getting much closer. But we've got two issues to deal with. We've got the head, of course, covering the beam as the eyes are facing away. And we've got our eyes changing shape as they're displayed at different angles as it rotates. So I solve those problems by using a path animation and a mask animation. Let's delete that new layer and I'll show you the final layers I made. We can get rid of those guides now too. We don't need to see those. So there's lots more keyframes in these layers. So what I did every frame to match it with the eyes is just nudge these two points to make sure they lined up with the very corners. And then once it started to get around to the other side of the head, I introduced this mask and then every frame just adjust that mask slightly to cover up the beams. And I know this looks like a lot of keyframes and a lot of time consuming work because you're only making slight adjustments each frames. And again, it begins to loop in the back as well. Then we can hide the face and then back in our main comp, we can apply those same rainbow gradient effects. And now we're beaming. Now the very last step is to apply some more effects. So I'm doing all of that on this top adjustment layer. Let me turn them all off and zoom in a bit. The first effect we've applied is noise. Now I've gone for 25% noise and that's a lot of noise. I'll admit that, but I really like noise. And especially after these last two effects. 
And then we've got our post-rise time from earlier, making everything 12 frames per second. And then we've got this combo of effects that I learned from one of Jake Bartlett's wonderful videos, which is a blur and then a sharpen, a great one-two punch. And this helps sort of essentially degrade the quality of the video, but it leaves it with a neat effect. And it also helps unify the scene. And if you want, hide imperfections and differences in the style of elements you've used. So first we blur everything with just a Gaussian blur. And essentially what this does is remove information from the comp. And then we add a sharpen effect. And the job of this effect is to try to guess what that information is that we've lost in a blurry image. And when they work together, we get some kind of neat artifacting and a different effect. One thing that I do like is this kind of halo of light and contrast that we get on the edges of things. And it makes that noise look a bit more like film grain. And it looks a bit like a VHS or maybe some old footage that's been recorded off another screen. And I just like the look for something as surreal as this. Again, I'm a man of subtlety. Of course, you can download this project file for free down in the description. I won't be able to include the head and ice cream assets, I'm afraid, but have a look around at my effects setup. And I would love to see how you use them in your own projects. Thanks again to Yellow Images for sponsoring this video. Having access to a library of assets like this that the Yellow Ticket gives can save you a massive amount of time and money when needing to create your projects. Again, that code is BENMARRIOTT20 to get 20% off on Yellow Images. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.